Hello, uh, tacticians, special agents, undercover cops, and good guys. Welcome back to Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands and playing hardball. Bad news, everyone. So, you remember the last episode? And now you wonder why are we actually in Kuwani? And why is Mohokoyo already done? There, Antonio, the Buchon of the smuggling area. The game failed me again and thanks to the specific uh, game mechanics of uh, saving there's no way to get back. So I actually had dedicated a longer gaming session maybe like of five six hours where I really pulled off everything here. <laughs> it is so frustrating. Yeah, I, I really did everything and well as you can see we have all the Kingslayer files we have all uh, the province content weapon way uh, weapon case wise and everything else we got the bonus medals and our, I was really happy I felt really good about this because uh, with that well I want to um, increase the speed a little bit in which I'm playing through this game because I want to end it um, because I want the uh, the gigabytes the storage, so, and I have I have to say I don't you know me, yeah I try to be always rather positive yeah I mean I do criticize a game of course if it's uh, if it's uh, justified, but this game here Wildlands, it's the number one game, like basically as far as I remember my game alive. Yeah, that has given me so much trouble like the like the uh, crashes to blue screen yeah I mean there's a con when I play this game yeah and I want to share what I'm playing there's a constant fear that this game is crashing my computer and destroys my uh, operating systems file structure it had shotgun my file structure again um, basically after the last crash uh, that that was two episodes ago I think and I think what I did uh, was that I just hit the Windows button just to check something uh, with my recording software and then I get got back into the game I think that I believe that must be the reason otherwise I was rather happy because the game r ran stable like for these four more than four hours uh, four or five hours all at once because the other uh, newer episodes right now uh, I recorded uh, within this gaming session um, and that was why I kept playing because I was so happy that it was uh, running stable and I could do the recordings and play these missions here. But everything was black. So you could always, uh, like what I recorded was black, so you could only hear my voice. And it is so sad. Yeah. But what we are going to do now is actually to watch the mission briefings, I think. Yeah. I mean, you didn't really miss anything. Yeah. We know this is a Ubisoft game. What, what is actually, uh, the thing? Yeah. Is that, that we can see the landscape. Let's have a look over there. Maybe very quickly. What is differing in, in the game? We already have seen nearly everything. Right, yeah. So this is the south. Let's have a look at the landscape. Yeah. Just the usual stuff, but pretty nice, I think. Let's let's fly over the the province again of Mokokoyo. Um, and what what I did, uh, I played all the missions here, obviously. And what happened? Um, well, not much actually. You, so you didn't really miss too much. Uh, there was this Antonio guy in Mojocoyo. Yeah. And did you actually miss Elgato as well? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I think. Oh God, yeah. I think you also missed the the Elgato, right? The unkillable guy. Yeah, but you know. Uh, I couldn't even say what happened here. I have to say, I, I don't recall because it's so pointless. Um, so this this guy, I think he. Ah, yeah, no, I know, I remember. The, this guy uh, is uh, was like a cokehead, so he was like snorting the stuff himself, yeah, which made him paranoid. And he had a beautiful wife, who was also more the type dead inside, yeah, like a woman in red dress. 
looking pretty good, but uh, yeah, uh, the, this uh, this Antonio guy was actually um, abducting a woman as well and torturing them and so on. And uh, his wife didn't care about that at all. Yeah, but she only cared about her position. And then we extracted her and got her out of there. Um, and uh, Bowman, our operating uh, agent, yeah convinced her uh, to talk again yeah without much uh, resistance Whoa. and I got eyes on a big fucking house welcome to Shea beauty queen we should drop in and... ah we are in Barvetros already okay Bowman says she's in Peru at the moment business trip but a little recon couldn't hurt yeah no we don't need that so um yeah so the guy uh <clears throat> We extracted him as well. Yeah, so it's basically like tactically speaking, it was the same mission we already know. Yeah, nothing new there. Um, and uh, Bowman told him that he needs. Oh, there are Sam's. Okay, we need to get to the down. So Bowman uh, actually. Uh, Sorry, I don't. I don't wanna be blown out of the sky here. Bowman uh, gave him a lot of coke to snore, yeah, and uh, that that made him uh, talk, yeah, and then that was it. So that's basically what happened here. The, uh, tactically speaking, you only miss one thing. There was a rather cool battle uh, when we um, assaulted. A, an outpost and the enemy kept coming so that was actually like we I could uh, I could blow up a number of cocaine stashes here so that's why we have uh, dis uh, uh, destabilized uh, the smuggling further so like basically two main uh, or three main uh, coke stashes yeah uh, and that was that yeah? just blowing it up yeah, we already know that it was pretty cool because there was there were several helicopters coming in not sure if that was scripted and one of them actually had a missile so it was a rocket helicopter that was something new in this province uh, and the only thing that was really new and well we got some map weapons uh, which are worse than what we have it is this sniper rifle here now let's have a look at it yeah but it's worse than than what we have and otherwise uh actually oh yeah and actually i think it was here in this uh mission we we got a better grenade launcher although it doesn't really say this m203 gl that's apparently that's better but i only know that from reading online uh, a while ago so this one yeah you can find here in Mohokoyo, right? So, here in Mohokoyo, and that's it. So, and now the idea is to destabilize uh, the smuggling further so we get to the beauty queen, that's what we want to look at, and then La Gringa, and then El Sueño already offered to talk, which we can do up here. Where is it? Yeah, here, this one. El Sueño's proposition. But I thought that before we talk with him, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Uh, well, it's truly a trap. But I think it's probably better if we also destabilize uh, the smuggling. Yeah, uh, And that might even uh, influence what's going to happen there, obviously, right? So, and then what we can do now... We've got intel on cartel activity at the train cemetery. Check the place out and see what you can find. Yeah. So, and that's what we are going to do now. All right. Yeah, and well, and otherwise we just know that... Uh, well, yeah, this is actually cool. We know that Ubisoft is strong with the environment, like it looks cool. Oh yeah, and you shouldn't fly like that. Okay, okay. Bad flying. Hola, hola, lo siento. 
uh, you can, you, hola hombre, you can have this helicopter, it's yours, we are just borrowing your car, thank you, come on guys, hop on, hop on guys, hola hombre, uh, vamos a pagar algo, ya, yeah, pero necesito el coche, gracias, so, right, so and now, yeah, oh yeah, and there's actually information there, so and now we are here, in this last mission, it's already five skulls. Yeah, let's drive through the village. Sakani. There's Unidad. They didn't see us, that's good. And actually, maybe it's a good idea that we use this car because it's inconspicuous, yeah. And then coming from here. Oh yeah, this is so this is the salt desert. It's actually so the, the weather is really nice, of course. When the local mines went bust, the companies left all the trains behind. Keep your heads down. We don't want to say a big hello until we find something. Oh, I see something something bad. Oh no, what's this? We have a body here. We have a number of bodies, yeah, and oh, and by, by the way, so sorry, so in Mohokoyo is here, let's look at the missions of Mohokoyo again, yeah, ah, yeah, can I actually, can we, can we watch the videos again, I don't think so, yeah, but let's, let's watch this one. Oh no, actually it's all the Kingslayer files. Every week, more than six tons of white powder moves through Mohokoyo. It's a transit point, where shipments are kept secure, awaiting export to Brazil, the US, and Europe. Antonio is the Buchon out here, the boss. His job is to keep all that coke safe. Thing is, being surrounded by cocaine all day is a really stressful job. Like being the fat kid in charge of the sugar factory. And we all know what happens when you eat too much sugar. Your brain rots. You stop talking on phones. You stop trusting your own people. You stop going home to your wife. You even stop telling anyone when the shipments are coming in until the moment they arrive. When it comes to coke transports, Antonio is a vault. And I want to crack that motherfucker open. Yeah. So that that was that. And let's hear the recording, the hopeless. Maria Purissima. I was getting anxious. I don't have much time. He may come back any time. Mama, he's going loco. It's a pulvo blanco. It makes him more violent. Violent? Pero, mija, you do know who you married, don't you? Mama, he looks up women from the village. He tortures them. ¿Y qué? They're just bolivianas. I don't care about them, pero tengo miedo. I'm afraid. He thinks I'm cheating on him. He threatens me, shows me pictures of what he's done to those women. Mama, I want to get back to Mexico. Gabriela, pobrecita, what are you thinking? When I was your age, I wanted to run. Pero, when you're an Arcus woman, it's impossible. So, do like I did. Enjoy the dinero and, uh, for the sake of the El Bebe growing inside you, don't stick your nose in your husband's business. Believe me, it's only for the better. So there we go. So we know yeah, about the corruption of these pe uh, people and persons. Then, during his confession to, to a Santa Muerte priest, Antonio rants about how everything's going to hell and everyone's out to get him. So he, the cocaine made him paranoid. Three months ago. We used to do between 7 and 7.5 tons a week. Now when we do 6 tons, we're happy. Eso es triste. Mi hijo, debe ser por la canícula. The weather wasn't good those last months. The consequences on the harvest were disastrous. That's what they say, but that's too simple. They? What are you talking about? Yo no sé. Maybe another cartel. L look around you. Everything is giving in. They're spying on us. They corrupt our best men. 
Even my wife is acting weird. She doesn't smile. She makes phone calls when I'm out. And in la cama, she's colder than a corpse. But if we don't pay attention, everything will collapse. My son, you soar to Santa Muerte. You would limit your use of the polvo blanco. Are you sure you respect your oath? Yeah, so. Right, and then the last resort prayer written by a local to seek help Holy Mary to bring back his wife. So, yeah. So basically like uh, some some village person uh, uh, told, the, uh, or wrote down that uh, on the way home, yeah, on the way home the, uh, the wife uh, disappeared and he doesn't know where she is. He looked and blah and uh, hopes and prays that uh, she's returning. Then we do have another piece of uh, uh, of uh, information and evidence. A Unidad report on a woman who disappeared recently in Mokokoyo province. Yeah, and no intervenir, so don't intervene means uh, that... So the context is that the police, uh, of course, received this... Um, uh, this report por probably from the uh, from the family or whatever, but uh, they they got the order not to intervene, not to do anything uh, about this missing person. Then, an article of Barvechos newspaper reporting on the recent wave of women disappearing in Mohokoyo. The journalist suspects the cartel to be involved. Yeah. Then a handwritten note giving a breakdown of cocaine imports and exports from Peru going to Okoro. Yeah. So we know about the smuggling a little bit more. Then this is like the local legend. Chulpas are pre-Columbian stone funeral towers that can be found in the Andes of Bolivia and Peru. They were built to protect and honor the mummified bodies of noble family members. Along with some personal belongings, the corpses were placed inside in a fetal position, the doors usually fa facing east, so every morning the rising sun can flood the corpses with light, symbolizing the cycle of d uh, life and death. There I found out that uh, they had misplaced these these towers, yeah, so they were actually facing west. <laughs> then we do have this year, every the Tinku legend every year rural communities in the region of Potosi organize big celebrations called Tinku in daytime the villagers brawl following special rites shedding blood as a way to honor the earth goddess and ensure the promise of a good harvest it is also a way to release social tensions clay pots such as this one are traditionally used to drink alcohol the drunkest or toughest guys fight to the death even the women take part helping their husbands or fighting each other so, I'm still not sure, actually, oh, I forgot, uh, I wanted actually to do some research, because this sounds quite grim, doesn't it? Not sure if this is, like, really a tradition there, and fighting to the death and stuff, yeah, maybe it was like that, um, but, yeah, certainly an interesting insight, then the legend Vilancha, La Vilancha is a sacrificial ritual to honor Pachamama, the earth goddess. Indigenous people cut a llama's throat and shed its blood on the ground, hoping for a good harvest. Miners spill the blood over mine entrances for safety at work or to find a good vein of minerals. As Pachamama is a jealous goddess, the ritual is considered mandatory to satisfy her. During the Vilancha ceremony, a shaman or one of his aides may blow horns, such as this one, to attract Pachamama's good graces. So, <clears throat> now you know everything about Mohokoyo, right? All right, then. And actually, I think I think uh, we can actually wrap up this episode. Let's call this episode Catching Up, yeah, about uh, the stuff we missed. And then uh, in the next one we are doing this year, we are getting the Kingslayer file and uh, the train graveyard in Kuwani to further work on the uh, smuggling right okay so thanks for watching guys this is where we can end this episode if you have any comments any experience with wildlands you wish to share with me and the community you are very welcome to do so as always and i would appreciate if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet so never ever miss an episode again so next time bye, -bye.